thank you, Sunny, for your kind invitation. Thank you, Director E. Bum and uh, the Chief Curator and the Research and Publication Team for this very important afternoon. Um, on December 17th in 2018, Swedish democracy celebrated its 100th birthday. In one of Modern Museum's newly installed galleries in Stockholm, attention was paid to the fact that it was 100 years ago since Swedish parliament made an agreement on general and equal voting rights, and the first women took their place in parliament. Today, Swedish democracy is regarded to be one of the most stable in the world, but looking back at this very country that only two or three years ago, two or three generations ago, excluded women's participation in democracy, illustrates how quickly democratic change can take place and should be a reminder and draw our attention to the fact that democracy can never be taken for granted. The outside world is changing rapidly. A more globalized economy, a growing international migration, ever-increasing digitalization, extensive climate change, a more unstable and violent world, and an international development with weakened democracy in many countries are trends that also affect Sweden. Like many Western countries, Sweden has for a long time moved into the direction of increased individualism. Our audience surveys show that the most common visitor who will visit the museum on their own initiative think of the visit as part of their self-realization project. With increased levels of education and material wealth, the focus on self-realization increases. The diversity of values, identities and lifestyles of our audiences are greater than ever. This is a natural part of the open welfare society's development. Individualization is facilitated by an increased international exchange and the impact of the internet and social media, which influences, creates context and makes information flow freely across borders. However, the development towards increased freedom and diversity creates tension in a country like Sweden, which historically has thought to gather the population around common culture, tradition and history. Sweden's historically homogeneous population and limited colonial history, together with the generous asylum policy over the last few decades, have contributed to major demographical and cultural changes. Organizations that historically have had great influence over people have partly been reduced in influence. For example, art education through study circles and art associations has declined significantly over the past few decades. But this does not mean that interest in modern and contemporary art and culture has diminished, but the path to knowledge has changed. Today, much of learning takes place on an individual level, on the internet, on one of our high-resolution screens, where the whole world's cultural heritage seems to be available. The development places new demands on the museum's digital contact surfaces with its audiences, um, and we meet the, our audience in places like YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. We are also currently working intensely with updating the public interface to our uh, database to increase access to our 140,000 rich collection online. Uh, our audio and video guide is also available digitally and can be downloaded free of charge as a smartphone application. We also publish and produce short documentaries about the artists we exhibit in our contemporary exhibitions and publish them on our YouTube channel and our other digital platforms. Last year, Moderna Museet celebrated its 60th birthday. Back in the 1960s and 70s, much of the cultural dynamics uh, lay between more traditional bourgeois cultural values and new radical, often more left-wing expressions. In this time of social change, the museum emerged as a new experimental arena, open to new ideas where both the right and the left stayed under the same roof. roof but not entirely without tension, as this image might illustrate um, when the Black Panthers had a meeting and a film screening in one part of the museum, whilst the Friends Society of the museum had a Friends meeting in another part. The museum director, Pontsultén, moved with great satisfaction between the two events. 
Hultén was the director of Moderna Museet throughout the 1960s. He described the museum as a cour de miracle, a court of miracles, where society accepted and allowed things to fall outside the limits, where you could play new music that could not be, be played in concert halls, or show experimental films that could not be shown in regular cinemas. This experimental and cross-border spirit lies deep uh, in the museum's DNA, and it's a vision we're working towards still today. In the 60s, there was a great belief that the art museums could be an institution that not only helped shape the individual citizen, but the entire future society. Perhaps this 60s spirit is uh, manifested at its most in the exhibition The Model, a model for a qualitative society in 1968. The exhibition was, as the title suggests, a proposal for a new way of organizing society. The visitors were invited to participate in the construction of this model of a model society. Tools and building materials were provided by the museum. The exhibition has been immortalized through the image where Minister of Education and Ecclesiastical Affairs, Olof Palme, as you can see here, dives into a sea of foam rubber. Palme would later become Sweden's prime minister and an internationally high-profile statesman. His unresolved murder on a winter's eve in 1986 would be the start of a new era in Sweden, which the Swedish people's home was considered to have lost its innocence. In today's Sweden, as in many other countries, we notice that increased polarization between those who acknowledge development towards individual freedom and diversity and those who want a society that is more clearly characterized by a uniform culture and a tradition-bound norm. The political contradictions along the left-right uh, scale diminish in favor of contradiction along a sociocultural viewpoint that goes between libertarian and traditionalist values. It is a part of the population leaning on values such as tradition, family, religion, nationalism, discipline, law and order, whilst another part of the population is closer to values such as the individual's freedom, cultural diversity, tolerance and international openness. It is therefore especially important that the museum is sensitive and open-minded without compromising the fundamentals fundamental values of the democracy. The Council of Europe declared in 2014 that Europe faces the worst democracy crisis since the end of the Cold War. In a report on the state of democracy in 2017, growing authoritarian populism is highlighted as a serious threat to open pluralist democracy in many of the member states in the Council of Europe. The Swedish government has recently launched an action plan to address challenges that are considered particularly important, which are democratic exclusion, a threat on democratic dialogue, and challenging anti-democratic actors. To secure the independence of the museums, in 2018, a new museum law came about uh, that says the following. Based on its subject area, a museum must contribute to society and its development by promoting knowledge, cultural experience, and formation of free opinion. And it goes on. Exhibition and other public activities at a museum should be accessible to all and adapted to the user's different conditions. The purpose of the new museum law was to establish the public museum's free status as institutions of knowledge and their responsibility to convey a reflective approach to history and the outside world. Although Swedish democracy might be strong, there are large differences in participation. Too many now stand outside democracy. Many do not participate or feel involved in it. There is a risk that people who feel that they have no influence on democracy are attracted to anti-democratic ideas. They lose faith and channel their frustration in a destructive direction. Not least, it is serious when feelings of exclusion are being consolidated in children and young people. Fundamental socioeconomic conditions, such as education and social conditions, are of great importance for people's opportunities to participate in democracy. 
people with a high level of education acquire knowledge, tools and contacts that make it easier to get involved in social issues. People who grow up in families where it is considered natural to get involved tend to engage themselves. People who are in socially vulnerable situations have a disability or suffer from ill health often have poorer conditions and opportunities to participate in democracy. Moderna Museet has a long-term commitment to making the museum available to these groups. Also, mainly newly arrived immigrants have a challenge because they lack prior experience of living in democracy. Lack of language skills and lack of accessibility can also constitute thresholds for active participation in democracy. The museum is therefore actively working with guided tours, workshops and other activities in languages that are common with newly arrived Swedes. And as of now, we offer guided tours in eight different languages. And in our museum in Malmö, all our signs are in three languages, Swedish, English and Arabic. Democratic exclusion also has a geographical dimension. This is particularly evident in areas with socio-economical challenges in and around larger cities, where parts of the population feel distanced to the institutions of democracy. This is also reflected in the activities of our two museums, in the capital of Stockholm and in the country's third largest city, Malmö. The museum in Stockholm, as seen here, is an international tourist destination. Located on a beautiful museum-filled island in the center of the city, Stockholm is a quite segregated city where the participation of democracy tends to decrease the further out from the center of the city you are. The museum on Malmö, on the other side, uh, is uh, in a residential area and the city is more integrated. The work of reaching out to a larger and more diverse local audience is something the museum in Stockholm is going to work intensely with within the future. So how do Modern Museet meet these challenges? Well, to be the truly open museum we strive to be, we work hard to create an atmosphere where every visitor feels welcome and thus open and receptive to new impressions, regardless of previous experiences and prior knowledge. The first thing you encounter in Moderna Museet's foyers is a coffee bar. The scent of a freshly made espresso gives the first welcoming uh, impression. But the most important thing for us when it comes to creating a welcoming environment is the personal meeting. In our entrances and galleries, you meet hosts who are not only there to sell tickets or guard the artworks, they really are hosts. Many of them are artists or have an art diploma or other skills relevant to make them great communicators with our audiences. The hosts are always available for conversation with a visitor who looks lost or maybe just have had an art experience that may have raised questions or created discomfort. Perhaps the most important tool we have in the work of creating an open museum is free admission which is a political instrument. We have had politically controlled free admission in two rounds, first between 2004 and 2007. At that time, Moderna Museet was in the forefront of the debate in favor of free admission before the reform. And um, the reform also was recontinued since 2015 uh, with the new government. On average, the reform has brought an audience increase of 25% to the National Museum since the reform was reinduced. The reform means that there is free admission to the museum's collection, but uh, it is up to the, each museum to decide how they charge for temporary exhibitions. For financial reason, reasons, we are forced to charge admission for larger expensive exhibition with, for example, expensive loans, um, but the ambition is to be able to offer our audiences as much as possible without an entrance ticket. Teacher-led school classes and visitors up to the age of 19 have free admission to all our exhibitions. Fundamental to all our educational activities is the idea of everyone's equal value and everyone's right to equal participation 
in our museum and our democracy. Accessibility for people with functional variation is therefore a priority. We have regular guided tours, workshops and other activities for visitors with cognitive impairments and visual impairments. We also offer guided tours in sign language. For the visually impaired, we develop an, uh, developed an educational kit where you can experience art in a tactile way. In this case, it's actually a real uh, artwork by Pablo Picasso, the hand that is felt on uh, with uh, latex uh, gloves protecting the artwork. Um, it's only the groups that go on a guided tour for the visually impaired that really can experience the movement in a work such as Marcel Duchamp's The Bicycle Wheel, seen here. As the wheel in the replica in the uh, visually impaired kit uh, is able to spin, as the real museum piece is not. We also have uh, art classes for vulnerable audience members groups, such as women with experience of homelessness and substance abuse. We are part of a nationwide initiative, Meetings with Memories, for people suffering from dementia. And with the project Dance with Parkinson, we offer activities for people suffering from Parkinson disease. Crucial for Moderna Museet's pedagogy is emphasizing the importance of dialogue and everyone's right to expression. We do not only uh, invite our audiences to consume artist images and objects. We also provide the conditions and the opportunities to create on their own. In uh, 1981, the exhibition A Child Has 100 Languages on Creative Pedagogy at Public Kindergartens in Reggio Emilia, Italy, received a lot of attention at Moderna Museet. It has had a great influence on how we work with pedagogy to this day, but this first exhibition about the pedagogy of Reggio Emilia um, uh, helped spread the philosophy internationally. The exhibition was about the creative pedagogical activities at the municipal preschools in the Italian town of Reggio Emilia. This pedagogical philosophy started as a kind of resistance movement after the Second World War to vaccinate every new generation against all forms of anti-democratic tendencies. Instead of an authoritarian pedagogy, individual discovery, experimentation and reflection were central. Loris Malaguzzi, the frontman of the movement, formulated in a poem that all children are born with a hundred languages, but deprived of 99 while growing up. Malaguzzi highlighted the strong inseparable relationship between education, citizenship and participatory democracy. Regardless of spoken language, the development of the child's imagery is universal. And the better we develop our imagery, the better we think and speak. The motivation behind the philosophy is, as Italian poet Gianni Rodari wrote, not because everybody should be an artist, but because no one should be a slave. The concept of a guided tour combined with creating in one of the museum's public uh, workshops is a cornerstone in the museum's pedagogical program. A tour and workshop, as we call them, um, starts with a group experiencing art together with one of the museum's art educators in the galleries. After the tour, the participants get to create something of their own in one of the workshops, uh, using high-quality artistic materials. Uh, two of the most beautiful rooms, one seen here, in the Stockholm Museum, uh, are the public workshops overlooking the Baltic Sea inlet to Stockholm. The interiors are built for heavy duty and to meet the needs of both older and younger audiences. The concept of a guided tour and workshop is a key ingredient in all our uh, family programs on weekends and holidays. But our program also embraces the youngest children. At our baby tours, babies and their guardians can experience art together at a breastfeeding pace. The child gets to have a visual, sensory art experience while the adult learns ways to talk to children about art and how to stimulate their creativity. Afterwards, in the workshop, the children can paint with 
edible colors such as fruit or berry purees or make uh, sculptures uh, with paper bags. The large flow of refugees into Sweden in recent years has led to several projects in collaboration with authorities and civil society organizations. The museum has an extensive collaboration with SFI, Swedish for Immigrants, the free Swedish education that every municipality, according to the Education Act, is obliged to offer immigrants. The project Mom Learns Swedish offers art classes to young mothers who get an opportunity to learn Swedish throughout, while the museum helps take care of the children. We also host language cafes for immigrants who want to learn Swedish and meet new friends through stimulating activities. A very important group for us is the super kids. The super kids are unaccompanied minors who have arrived to Sweden alone, seeking asylum. They have fled from war, violence and poverty. Often they have traveled over half the globe on their own. This makes them real superheroes in our eyes. They are usually placed in family homes when they arrive to Sweden, but after reaching the age of majority at 18, they risk ending up in homelessness. For these young people, the museum can be a safe space in an otherwise uncertain existence. These individuals belong to the most vulnerable in our society, and therefore they also risk being furthest away from our democracy. For a while, Moderna Museet also established an art school at an asylum center in collaboration with the local heritage society in a small town in the middle of Sweden. 250 refugees had arrived overnight, and 50 of them were children. Most came from Iraq, Syria and Afghanistan. With sign language, goodwill and a little bit of English, one of my fellow curators temporarily established a workshop in one of the facility's common areas. Just as the museum workshops, only high-quality artist materials were used. Several of the children had previously only used pencils, so they got to learn how to use different kinds of pens that are common in Sweden, such as ballpoint and felt pens. In the workshop, the children could play and just be children, but more importantly, they also were enabled to create images on the same term as Swedish children. Once admitted to Swedish schools, they would be able to communicate visually on the same terms as local children. Drawing and painting helped them communicate with their peers and teachers. The images the children made were often happy pictures. Children often make happy images when they are in crisis. They start to express the more darker pictures only when they feel safe. The images made in the workshop also often featured flags of both their old and new country, like seen here in this uh, image of a five-year-old child. Well, Moderna Museet is quite famous for its work with young children, but uh, since 2003, we have had a special focus on developing experimental pedagogical projects for teenagers and young adults. Between 2004 and 2013, the pedagogical development project Zone Moderna was targeting the upper secondary schools of Stockholm. Art can have a significant impact on the teenager's formation of identity. However, our experience of working with teenagers showed how difficult it is often to escape the pre-assigned roles given by peers in school. We therefore designed a project that allowed young people to do just that by constructing new groups of students from several schools around the city. Everyone got a fresh start. We created each new group with students from schools of various socio-economical and geographical areas of the city. The project took place within regular school hours. To make this possible, we worked intensely together with the school administrators coordinating all the students' schedules. Each Moderna Museum project had its starting point in one of the museum's main exhibitions. An established artist, preferably someone on display in the museum, in the collection at the time, was invited to lead the group of students through an artistic process of his or her own while, simulating or while simultaneously guiding the students through creative processes of their own. An art educator would lead the process together with the artist, and the project had one of the two museum's workshops to its disposal throughout the project. 
Each project then led to a presentation in Zoom Moderna, uh, one of the workshops with a grand opening for family and friends. By working close to an artist for a longer period, the students would get a deeper understanding of artistic, artistic processes, realizing all the layers of work and knowledge behind the art they would experience in the white cube, a room that risks to create a distance between the artist's intentions and the viewer's experience. The students of Zoom Moderna got deeply involved in the processes, and they became ambassadors for the project and the museum, passing on a deeper knowledge that they acquired to family and friends through peer education. Through Zoom Moderna, a network of young people slowly began to grow over the city. This relationship often continued after the projects ended, and connections were also made between projects over the years. In this image, uh, um, in this documentation uh, image, we see a silent, non-political demonstration being escorted by police through the streets of central Stockholm. The protesters are marching. Uh, they are students from Zoom Moderna and members of the Moderna Museet Friends Society. And they walk together with artist uh, Jakob Dahlgren. The project was made on occasion on a large retrospective exhibition of Swedish concretist art artist Ole Battling. And the paintings they carry are 150 replicas of paintings made by Battling in the 1950s to 1970s. The, manifest the manifestation soon became a work that Jakob Dahlgren would perform on occasion around the world. After Zoom Moderna, we reinvented the project into a museum, museum between the years of 2013 and 2016. Uh, it was directed at a slightly older target group, young adults, aged 16 to 26. Each semester, one or two projects explored the museum's role as a public space. Two projects, uh, the projects often adopted an activist approach, and the art educators leading the projects were themselves artists who had been working with questions about accessibility in society. The first project coincided with the museum's need to update its foyer. This became the starting point for a project investing what kind of a public space a museum and particularly a museum foyer is. And here you can see uh, previous director Daniel Bimbam speaking with um, the participants in the project. And here you can see some of the participants trying out how it is to live in a museum. So for a couple of days over a weekend, they set up camp in the museum corridor uh, next to the foyer and even slept there during the nights in this high security building. For the second project, students were invited for upper secondary schools and folk high schools, including students in woodwork and design. After a series of uh, Skype workshops with Brazilian artist Rivane Neunschwander, the group was given the opportunity to create a new interior for the foyer in collaboration with the artist. Neunschwander, who had been previously working with converting homemade furniture found in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, in contempor into contemporary design objects, wanted to make a similar project in Stockholm. But in the homeland of IKEA, people have not been producing furniture on their own for over 100 years. So the project would take an interesting turn. Instead of searching for furniture in the street, they explored the Swedish craft traditions in the Open Air Museum of Skansen in Stockholm. At Skansen, entire buildings from the past centuries have been preserved in a living natural park environment, recreating nature from different parts of Sweden. In collaboration with uh, Rivane Neunschwander, a local interior architect and artist, the participants in the project created chairs and tables for the museum foyer based on Swedish folklore heritage. The furniture is still in use today, and it has been presented as an autonomous work of art in the exhibition, Manipulate the World, Connecting Öyvind Falström. Here seen together with uh, lamps, an art piece made by Tobias Reberger. In the project Mall Rats, the group left the museum to relocate at Gallerian, a nearby, a nearby shopping mall. Shopping malls often produce exhibitions and went to create exciting and stimulating environments for the customers. But how permissive and creative are these spaces? 
The conditions for creativity in the semi-public commercial space of the mall were investigated through workshops, performances and activist actions. By challenging the boundaries of the public space to the extent that conflict arises, the project made the politics of the space uh, visible. In this image, we can see a group soon to be rejected from the mall by security officers after an unannounced meditation session in one of the mall's common areas. In the museum, museum project, this is not an exhibition at Moderna Museet. The limits of the museum were further tested. This time, the participants were invited to use the museum itself as material for artistic investigations under the motto, without the point of view, no perspective. Using activist and subversive strategies to examine the museum from an institution-critical perspective, the project really did put the museum to the test. Some participants decided to walk through the galleries at arm's length distance from the gallery walls, creating concern among hosts and security guards. The distance of arm's length is also what the principle is called that regulates Swedish politicians' influence on public museums. Another group made a performance inside of Olaf Eliasson's work, Soy Corpa da Obro, Your Body of Work. Wearing costumes made of the same plastic film used to create the labyrinthic work by Olaf Eliasson, uh, it created a sound causing people to believe the whole installation was falling down, establishing the whole museum when they walked through it. And here you can see the participant. Uh, borrowing the director's room to make these outfits before they started to walk in the art piece, creating chaos. Um, oops. Well, the activities and projects mentioned here are just but a few undertakings we do to stimulate our audience's active participation in democracy. Other recent undertakings, nourishing citizenships, are, for instance, a web-based uh, interactive project Acclimatize, a digital exhibition where the audience can upload and share works of thought on climate change and sustainability. And an upcoming event during Stockholm Pride in the end of July highlights the pioneering work of Eva-Lisa Bengtsson, a pioneer within the queer and feminist movement. The reading, Dear Eva-Lisa, is part of artist Sam Hultin's project, Eva-Lisa's Monument. Eva-Lisa Bengtsson was a dedicated activist sorry, uh, in the feminist and lesbian movement and in the early trans movement. When she opened Swedish first club for trans people in 1964, she got a lot of mail. Piles of letters came from trans people who shared their inner thoughts. Today, they voice a history that is unknown to most people. The reading will, for the first time, make this letter about love, solidarity and fighting prejudices together public. So that's a little bit of the program of the Moderna Museet. Thank you very much.